techno update. Subscribe now. Let's start with the hardware. This is a solid device, as all high-end BlackBerry devices have been over the past few years. Most notably, the aluminum frame joins with the metal frets of the keyboard seamlessly, and while I'm not an enormous fan of the flat top with rounded corners, the phone certainly paints a unique picture. Indeed, the matte silver finish of the frame honors early BlackBerry models without going too retro, though the black and silver color palette definitely gives me the feels. There are modern touches here, though, the symmetrical speaker and microphone grills on the bottom are flanked by a USB-C port, while the sizable, and distracting, to be honest. Front-facing camera sits next to it holes and a duo of sensors brace against a large 4.5-inch LCD screen. The phone was running Android 7.1.1 Nougat on Build ak 31 with the April 5, 2017 security patch. It received an update to Build ALO 93, which fixed a number of early bugs and performance problems. Running on the Snapdragon 625 platform with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, BlackBerry Mobile spent a lot of time at the phone's inception justifying the use of an older mid-range chip on a phone that, at $549, approaches flagship prices. I've had great experiences with Android phones of similar pedigrees, in particular the excellent Moto Z Play. But when I first received the KE Yone, I was shocked to see how much slower it seemed than that highly optimized Motorola device. Indeed, not only was it occasionally difficult to type without lag, but apps would load slowly, menus would crawl as I scrolled, and the keyboard's smart scrolling would intermittently fail. The good news is that after an update, the day before the review embargo lifted, Natch. Much of the grime disappeared, and the phone began running the way I hope it will when it reaches retail. Even on this new software build I'm going to save my definitive thoughts on performance until I received a retail unit with final software, since there are still areas where BlackBerry can tighten things. Still, the Snapdragon 625 chip inside seems to provide sufficient horsepower for the meandering tasks I submitted to it, including the occasional game of Pinout and Super Mario Run, my two mobile game addictions of the moment. Even better is the battery life which, like the aforementioned Moto Z Play, spans days, not hours. The 3,505 mAh battery is half of the equation the other half being the power-sipping Snapdragon 625 and relatively low-resolution LCD screen. This is a great combination, and is sure to win power users over. Whereas a phone like the Galaxy S8 left with 10-20% to at the end of a long work day, the KEO often leaves me with close to 